Okay, I made a big mistake. I read this series on my bus ride from my job to university, which is about 40 minutes, and I finished reading Catelyn's chapter during this time. And terrible decision because, like, I'm sitting on the bus and I'm trying not to die as I'm reading quite literally, I really goddamn hope the worst chapter in these books because how the fuck could this get any worse like and like just like like, and, like I don't understand how anyone can read these like I just like I know I've pretty much predicted the death of all the Starks at this point but never did I say that they were all gonna die in the span of like minutes because that's fucked up like how can you? I'm saying this once and for all. Like anybody who has read this series all the way through and <laughs> continues to like enjoy it and cherish it and all that, all of you need severe fucking mental health support because what is this? Like this is <laughs> this is terrible. Like, why? like why? How do we come back from this? Like I feel like. Like there's, like there's just like everyone's like, like I don't know because like there's no, like I don't, I don't know and like now I have to go into a meeting in 20 minutes and like I can't and like even just this one alone was way too much like it was too much to handle like I, and now I'm afraid to read Arya's chapter like I, I can't like this is insane. I don't, like, what? Like, I'm in, like, so pretty much in this series, whenever George R. R. Martin increases the chapter count for someone, they're about to die. Okay, great. And then, so that's why Arya was the main character throughout this entire book, because in book one, it was Ned. Like, this is so unfair. Why does it only have to be the Starks? Like, and like John just had to find out about all of that shit now he's gonna find out about about all of this too like man a person can only handle so much grief this family is fucking cursed like bro come on also George R. R. Martin like what what happened in your childhood that has led you to write this series. Like, do we need to start a GoFundMe for your therapy bills? Because, like, I'm telling you right now, I will do it. Like, what? Like, I just don't, like, because with all the other terrible things that happen, right? It's like, oh shit, like, Rob lost the North and like, all of this stuff happened. But even though hope is, hella small, it's still there, you know what I mean? Oh my god, okay, not the empathetic atmosphere coming in, or empathetic environment, what's that device called? I don't know, but as I'm recording this, so I'm walking outside to a meeting, and it starts fucking pouring rain, so, wow, way to go, I guess, literary masterpiece, I don't fucking know, anyway, I have to go into my meeting now, I'm gonna try and be a normal fucking human being. They're gonna be like, oh my god, Harmit, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? And I'm gonna be like, oh, the worst thing that could have happened happened in this book that I'm reading. Um, so yeah, lovely. Um, yeah, more later, see ya. We're here, she shouted. Her voice sounded thin and scared. A little girl, fuck this mother fucking bullshit. I hate this book. This is so stupid. Like, what? Like, that makes no sense. Like, this was not necessary. We can move the plot forward. We can do so much without fucking doing this. This is so... Like, three Starks, bro. Three Starks in two fucking chapters. Okay, so I guess the number book we're on is how many fucking Starks have to die? One in the first book, two in the second book, three in the third book. Like, I get that the ones in the second book didn't actually die, but, like, I don't fucking care. Because, like, fuck this. So it's just fucking Sansa and Jon holding down the fort. 
But Sansa's not gonna love that, because she's like her mom, where she doesn't really like John. But that doesn't even fucking matter. Like, this is... This... And, like... I... I... Like, I... I don't know. I'm... This has emotionally drained me, because... What the fuck? Like... How can this be okay? And people moved on from this? Like, how do you read this and then just move on and say, oh, let me read the rest of the two and a half books that are out. And oh my God, I'm so excited for the rest of the two that are, or two or three, I don't fucking care, that are still coming out. Like, how, like, that's cruel. That's heartless. How can you, like, how can you read this and keep reading? Like, that's, that's so stupid. Like, you can't, that's so Like, I don't Same. This is the one. This is the one. <laughs> I'm gonna be so like I'm gonna be rude in this episode and That's I apologize okay. in advance. I'm ready for it. I, I have hope you spent understand. all day preparing myself for it. I hope you understand because I don't fucking care. Alright. Like hang on. Every listener let's, is getting insulted in this episode. Let's I'm keeping that all in, by the way. Okay. This episode is worth breaking the script for. All right. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny, like, at all. Anyway. Welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire Symposium. My name is Nav, and my pronouns are they, them. And my name's Harmit, and my pronouns are Hershey, like the chocolate. And this is A Storm of Swords, <sighs> chapters 51 and 52, Catelyn and Arya. In these chapters, was there ever a wedding less joyful? I hate that that's a good intro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying. I'm like a minute away from tears. Oh, oh I I'm wish crying. I was there to give you a hug. I'm crying. Oh my god, why am I crying? I'm so sorry. Oh my god, pre to get some Kleenex or something. I don't have Kleenex. Do you have water? Yeah. I'm sorry. I know, like, if, if there was an episode I wish we could record in person, this is the one, but... Oh my god! You don't cry in front of me often, and now you're crying! Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. You're right, you do look great when you cry. <laughs> I, did. I said I look good after I cry, not while crying. I didn't think I was going to ball two oh. minutes into the episode. I really thought I was going to hold it together. You also just read these chapters, didn't you? Um, I read them a couple hours ago. Yeah, but like basically yeah, just, just now. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you would read them like last night so you would have some time to like sit with it. But like as soon as I didn't get any reaction text last night, yeah. I was like, oh, it's not happening. No, I'm glad that I didn't read them because I had a really good day today before I read the <laughs> chapters and that good day wouldn't have happened. Like you guys, I never put my hair down. I put my hair down. I looked good at work. Yeah, like, I looked good today. I don't anymore, but I did at one point. So I had a good day. Um, I remember at the end of last episode, I was so excited so for these that I was, that I was going to read them four days in advance. I remember specifically <laughs> saying that. And now I'm so glad that I didn't do that because this would have ruined too. my week. This would have ruined my week. And I'm just happy that I didn't read them four days ago. And read them today. Um, it'll make 
for... I was going to say it'll make for an entertaining episode, but I don't think two hours of me crying is very entertaining. <laughs> You're not good. It's, it's, it'll be fine. Anyway. um, Yeah, it's, it's so weird because the episode before the last one, you were like, oh, shit's going down. Shit's going down for sure. And that's the one that recently came out. And everybody in the spoiler chat was like, oh, my God, she's on the ball. She's going to guess it. And there's just me remembering our recording from the last episode and you being yay they're gonna unite and it's gonna be great (sighs) i still say that i predicted it i think you predicted parts of it i don't think you understood how bad it was gonna be well i didn't think three main characters were gonna die no but yeah speaking of which who died in these chapters (sighs) How about you name the people you can, and I'll fill in the blanks. Rob. Yeah. Catelyn. Arya. Um, yeah. Fucking Small John, that's his name. Mm-hmm. Um, Darcy. Daisy. Daisy. Uh, a lot of Starks. <laughs> Everybody. Everyone in, the, everybody in the, everyone in the tents. Maybe Edmir, we don't, no confirmation. Um, yeah. I would hope at least a couple of Freys. Well, we know one Frey for sure. Right, yeah, but he was the only one who seemed half decent, so. Yeah, the only one that who doesn't... wasn't, like, I- implicit in, yeah, so Aegon Frey, known as Jingle Bells. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Either there's sh- other Freys, but we don't know who. Yeah. Um, oh, a couple of the phrase that the hound killed. I don't think oh, we get their yeah. names. So there's that. <laughs> wow. Thanks, <laughs> fucking hound. Um, so yeah, Sir Wendell Manderley, Small John Umber, Daisy Mormont, Donald Locke, Owen Norrie, Robin Flint, Lucas Blackwood, and one of the Vances. So this is like just I just went through Kathleen's chapter and wrote down all the names that she listed. Was I have a question. Mhm. Remember when we started this segment? Yeah. Was Was this... it for today? Oh yeah, it, I, 100%. I'm I sorry. Hate you. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. I hate you. Okay, so at the end of Arya's <laughs> chapter, Nav had a note. Oh no. And it was, let me go to it, because I hated you. I hated you so much. I'm sorry, but at the same time, there was a sticky note. (laughs) Shut up. There was a sticky note, and it said, remove after reading. And then there was a sticky note underneath it that said, P.S. may want to record a reaction. (gasps) Okay, you know what? (laughs) I was just doing it for the pod. Like, how dare you? (laughs) How dare you? That's like, that's like, that's like having... I'm not equating myself to a celebrity here. Let, <laughs> let me just clear that up. But this is the best example my brain can think of. It's like, you know, you're like doing an interview and you're like talking off air with a celebrity and they get really honest with you. And then you just fucking turn on the camera and you're like, I'm going to use this footage. And it's like, they were they, like, they were, they thought they could trust, you know, and then you just, you just, you hit them with that. Might want to record this. No. This is great marketability. Anyway, um, and then underneath that, so both of these notes are written in black sharp. And then underneath that on the book in pencil, it says, <laughs> I'm sorry, sad smiley face. I don't understand why the, oh, you wrote it in pencil so I wouldn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause I was like. Why do you want me to be able to erase that? Like, that's the only good message. No, no, no. I know. Okay, it, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, so realized. that it was invisible. Okay, yeah. Um. <laughs> so that was a thing. That made me angry at you. I was um, already angry at you. Um. I'm going to yell at you a lot. <laughs> See, when you were at- really excited about the notes I left you and I was just like, uh-huh, okay. Oh, no. Because I knew they were gonna, you weren't going to love them in the moment. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then freaking, um, I also... Um, all of you must be terrible people for loving this series, and I don't feel bad about saying that at all, and I'm going to release that and not feel bad. And yeah. this episode is going to yeah. be, like, really yeah. petty, and I'm going to be We're a bunch of sadists. We're sorry. 
you all suck, and I hate all of you, and you're all terrible, and you all need therapy. <laughs> you say I need therapy? Don't you ever say that to me ever fucking again. Okay? Yeah, but I am all in therapy. therapy. <laughs> okay, true. Fine, sure, I, I agree I need therapy, but I'm doing something about it. <laughs> okay, whatever. This is not the time or place. Anyway, um, George R. R. Martin needs fucking therapy. He needs to stop. Like, I don't even care at this point. Stop writing the fucking series and go to therapy. Because why? Why are you coming up with this? Why is this what you decide to put out into the world? Your work, like, this is, this is your legacy. This is what people... Like, this is what people are getting from you. This is what's going to live on after you're dead and in shreds. Oh, that rhymes. Anyway, um, and you choose to write this? Like, what are you doing? Anyway, I'm screaming and I don't want to edit that. So I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> it's okay. You should just leave the screaming. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to edit it down so it's no longer screaming. You guys can deal with the screaming. Yeah, If you can deal with it. this, if you guys can deal with these contents, you can deal with me screaming. Anyway, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. calm down. No, it's okay. You don't need to calm down. But no, I feel bad. People are gonna think I'm a terrible person. You're not a terrible person. Uh, you know how we've been getting a lot of downloads recently, and there's mm-hmm. like a few factors to that because we're like uploading more frequently and all that. Um, one of the other major factors is that this day was coming, <laughs> and I, I, I every time you were like, "We got this many today," and I had to be like, "Oh yeah, cool." <laughs> And it's all because people are anticipating this episode and they're, like, tuning in now. You're joking. I'm not kidding. This is, like, if you were going to get spoiled on one thing in the series, this this would be it. Wow. Okay, you know what? Also, now I understand the hype behind Reigns of Castamere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never want to listen to that bloody fucking song ever again I in still my goddamn love it, life! No, I hate it so much. I like I hate that it's sonically pleasing because everything else about this song is nightmare fuel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, it was like it was almost like I don't want to say anything nice in this episode, but I have to. Not not because I have to, but because nice things are still coming to mind even though I don't want them to, but like poetically that was kind of genius. Yeah. Like, these like, chapters having this are song, actually a masterpiece, like, in and writing. And I hate, and I don't, I don't want them to be, but they are. No. Like, I want to, I want to be able to criticize them for their content and for their, like, for the writing. But it's like, I can't, because they're so, they're so Well, re- good, well done, I yeah. I say that because they're not, but they I are. Know. There was a lot of debate. Um, well, I kind of put out a plan that this was like the I was going to do these two chapters together because they're like the worst. And I just wanted yeah. to get it all done in one go. Please, And thank people you. were like, you should split it here or there. Or like there was a lot of back and forth. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, join the I discord think- <laughs> if you want to be part of my misery in that way. No, I will not stop plugging the discord just because I hate this series. <laughs> I'm a marketing girl at heart, apparently, and marketing (laughs) girls got a marketing girl. Literally, I, you know how I, you know, it's because I'm a workaholic, so how I deal with pain is by working. So as I was finishing up Arya's chapter, I got this brilliant idea for the image we're going to put on the Instagram. I'm going to do, like, a beautiful collage, and it's going to be amazing, and it's good. It's going to be this, like, multi-factorial thing, and it's going to be beautiful. And I started planning it instead of dealing with the fact that Arya just fucking died. (laughs) So, All right. um, follow the Instagram for the best image ever. Um, I should, by the way, this event is known as the Red Wedding. Fuck everybody. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of Red Wedding art out there. Because, <laughs> like I said, that. this is like the event of the series, you know? Yeah. I of mean, the series? I mean, I guess, how does it get worse than, <laughs> like, okay, well, I guess, it's, okay. I, like, honestly, this is, I can say with certainty that this is as bad as it gets. Okay, that's so, good. Yeah, right? That's There's hope around the horizon. Because I was kind of thinking, like, no way, like, this is only halfway through, no way, like, it must get worse. So if it doesn't get worse, that's good. But, like, also, how could it even? Like, the only reason it can't get worse is because this is, like, rock bottom. Yeah. 
So, I mean, at but least the only it way it now is up, so that's good. But that, but like, the trauma's still there. I know, I know, I know. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say or think. <laughs> I just... Uh, I am sorry, but at the same time, I'm so proud. <laughs> Why are you proud? Because I totally... Who are you proud of? Yeah, I personally, I'm proud of myself. Because I totally gaslit, gate kept, and girl boss my way to this day. <laughs> oh, like, okay. I, Any specifics I, or in general? Oh, like, I... I definitely gaslit you <laughs> on multiple occasions. Yeah, every time I was like... <laughs> there with the Lannisters you were like huh, yeah that fucking makes sense and I gate kept all the spoilers <laughs> and I just put the girl boss there because that's how you the saying fucking, goes <laughs> you didn't fucking girl boss but that's how the saying goes so you gotta say all of it yeah but you didn't girl boss whatever <laughs> I, um, I'm just like I'm proud of the fact that we got here without you being spoiled on it yeah I which is actually I'm proud of you for that too because you had to like be on your guard and avoid spoilers, so that's good. Okay, you know how every of every day recently I've been like, I hate this series and I can't do this podcast anymore. Yeah, like the last episode where you said, "If they don't reunite, I'm done." I mean, they kind of reunite in heaven, so I guess I'm. <laughs> <laughs> like... I guess so. <laughs> um. Okay, because yeah, so I've been saying that recently. But I've been, like, half joking. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really mean it. Like, completely, honestly. Like, I, I just, you know, sometimes you just, like, kind of want to freak out. And, yeah. you know, like, I was, I didn't really mean it. But this time I really was like, I don't know if I can do this podcast. Like, this is terrible. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, just yeah. put into perspective. I was like, wow, what I was crying about, I, I don't think I've cried until this point, but what I was like sad about before, like I wasn't really, didn't you have didn't a really mean question of the week where you were like, which chapter made you cry? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't answer. I don't remember answering it. Yeah. So now you have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. But yeah, I do. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I love that. Anyway, oh, man, I have been so I've been like really looking forward to it, but also dreading it at the same time getting no, here. That, that makes sense. Yeah, but we're here now. So and we know how you feel about these you chapters. Know I, you know how I said you're a kind person? <laughs> I always I'm say it enough. I always say it enough. You're not a nice person, but you're a kind person. I guess I'm neither now. I'm starting to think you're neither, because why would you make me read this? This is not kind. Maybe I just wanted somebody with me in this misery. Yeah, so that's not kind. Yeah, no, it's not. Wanting someone to suffer with you is not kind. <laughs> but I was just, uh, aren't you supposed to share your griefs and happiness with friends? So this is me sharing my grief. With informed consent. This was not informed consent. I feel like I like no, you warned didn't. you plenty of times. Every time you, you were optimistic, I was like, you sure about that? Yeah, but then every time I was pessimistic, you'd be like, oh, you're so pessimistic. Yeah, but that was part of my job. <laughs> no, I don't care. I don't like it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. There's no but. There's yeah, no there's twisting no buts. it. This is just bad. Okay, can we, let's, let's, do you want to, I don't, will you please summarize this for me? <sighs> okay, I'll try. You can choose how long you have. I'll give okay. you that. Whether okay. you want less time so that you don't have to talk about it for long or whether you want longer time so we can. Like, we can just do the same amount of time because I can't make this. I don't have the sanity to make this decision. All right. Three, two, one. Kathleen. Okay. So it's the feast after the wedding and, you know, they're sitting around and like, you know, they're doing the undressing ritual thingy and it's all a ruse. And then Daisy, Ryman dude or the son dude. And then shit breaks loose and everyone, all the phrase turn on the Starks and then. 
Catelyn gets killed, Rob gets killed, singers turn into arrow, pe- air, like, shooting crossbows, um, not shooting. Okay, switch. Know, crossbows. Arya. Um, Arya. Um, okay, so they're on the side of the tents by the Stark side, and they, they're they like, what the fuck's going on? And, like, Arya's like, oh my god, like, I'm scared to be happy. And it's like, yeah, girl, you fucking should be. And Hound's like, oh my god, okay, all your men are dying, and, like, the fire, there's a fire, and everyone's burning, and there's catapult, and there's all this happening, and then Hound kills people, and then Arya has to run from, cause, so Hound kills Arya, because he's like, okay, well, your brother's dead, he's not gonna fucking ransom me for you, so That's then he kills Arya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um. You said it's all a ru- it's all a ruse. I was like, or is it all a ruse? Bolted. I hate it here. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, so, Catelyn. So it's. Right where we left off, like in, in Arya's chapter, we heard that the wedding was over and there was a feast. And here's the feast. And Catelyn's in the midst of all that clangor that they're calling music. And just con- like it's a constant kind of theme in this chapter that the drums are just pounding and it kind of like her heart's pounding and her head's throbbing. And it's just like a, you know, it's a soup of dread. <laughs> Is what it is. In fact, yeah. even the last couple chapters were so full of dread and just like this anticipation. But I didn't mm-hmm. want to comment on any of it because I didn't want you to catch catch on. Mm-hmm. But everything, like just everything, is just like going slightly wrong. Mm-hmm. Like they're yeah. playing music, but it's like obviously they're not doing it well. We find out later that's because they're crossbowmen and they aren't musicians yeah. so they're just kind of playing a mix of like love songs and then like uh like kind of like drinking songs like the bear and the maiden fair and that kind of stuff so mm-hmm. it's all a mess and the food sucks which walder Frey is probably like well i'm not gonna spend money feeding people that are just about to die so <laughs> here's some rotten bread Wow. An economical god. I hate Frey. Yeah. Uh, In fact, might I bring something to your attention? So, so a few weeks ago, in May, you asked a question, like question of the week, which was, if you could change one thing in the series, what would it be? And your own response on May the 7th was, I would kill Frey, the main old dude. He needs to be stopped. (laughs) If only you could have had that power to change it. And I didn't even know. No, no, you didn't. Is this one of the things where you're like, sometimes you say shit and I have to control myself? Mm -hmm. Did people react to that and message you about it? Um... I don't remember, to be honest, but I remember screenshotting it immediately and putting it in my red wedding notes. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> I can't. Why did what specifically made me say that? Like, I, I don't know. We were just talking about like you asked the question, which was what you could change. And then this was your response. So you tell me. I don't know. That was a different person, man. That was someone who hadn't gone through this yet. That was a young soul. (laughs) A sweet summer child, if you will. Yeah. You're one no more. Now I'm a crusty autumn child. (laughs) Why do you gotta be crusty about it? Because I feel crusty. It's, you know... You know, like... I understand, like, logically how Arya felt when Micah died. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've never watched, never had a friend chopped up into pieces. Right. So I wouldn't know. But I imagine it's something like this. Yeah. Well. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is kind of like three of your best friends died, you know? We've been spending a lot of time with Arya, like, 
a lot in especially in these last two books she's had almost the most chapters out of anybody yeah it's and the whole it's like the Ned thing. Whenever they're the main POV, they're about to die. Yeah, but George R. R. Martin Catlet, is making uh, Sorry, it. what's her name? Arya had a lot of chapters in Clash of Kings, too. So, Yeah, but that was just continuation here. Either way, um, so that's the thing. So pretty much anytime anyone becomes the main character, they have to die so we can have a new one. Mm, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, all right, you can say that. I won't stop you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so back to the feast. And Edmir and Roslyn are like really all making out. mushy gushy. Yeah, but uh, Roslyn's got this pasted on smile throughout the wedding, and. Uh, Obviously, we know now why she was crying, why she's got this reaction, why she goes white when they're like, let's get to the bedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rob's like danced with all the phrase, just everybody. And Catelyn's noting how, you know, while the food sucks, he did, Walder Frey did provide a lot to drink. Which, again, is to get everybody drunk so that they're not able to fight back. And she's this noting... This was supposed just, to be our fucking strategy. I know, I know. This but it's like everybody's st strategies. It's, it's... I hate it here. <laughs> Man. Um, but there are a few guards that Rob has that aren't drinking that are, like, on duty. But there's, like, five of them against all of the phrase. So there's not much they can do, especially when... They're unarmed and, you know, it's kind of like a trap and it, it's definitely a trap, but also a, what's it called? Ambush? Ambush. Thank you. That's the word. <laughs> that was literally the word. I couldn't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. And like on the outside, everybody is unarmed. Like even Kathleen notices that everybody's like arms are hanging on pegs on the wall and she is glad of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't play much into it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know how to do this. It's it's almost like it's pointless talking about all these details when we know what happens at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so she's sitting next to Bolton and um, one of the other Freys, both of whom stink, by the way. And I felt her on that, too, because I have, like, a really strong sense of smell and I always... Like on the on public transportation, I always end up beside people that have a really strong smell to them, whether it's like they're wearing a lot of perfume or whether they have been like out sweating all day or whatever. But I felt her. <laughs> felt her in this moment. Um and she's talking to Lady Walda Bolton, who is known as Fat Walda. And I think we heard of this before, but like Bruce Bolton was offered his bride's weight in silver so Bolton picked the heaviest Frey girl and she's really proud of it and I am glad of that yeah she's like Farawalda so skinny she didn't get picked and now she's a maiden and I am Lady Bolton so fuck you and she's like I'm Lady Bolton now and my cousin's still a maid and she'll be 19 soon poor thing and I was like bro I'm 20 <laughs> That's not a standard to hold yourself to. No, I know, but it is just... Yeah. It just really... I gotta say, I don't despise Walda Frey. Yeah, no, she seems cool. I like yeah, her. Yeah, even though, like, all of her family sucks and her husband sucks and all of that. Yeah. Um, speaking of her husband, Bolton makes a toast to Walder Frey, even though they're clearly allied in this scheme. But the toast is, like, pointedly mentioning the sons that Bolton is wardening now mm -hmm. as if like don't mess with me i have your sons or grandsons mm -hmm. or something so even though they're allied in this they're still not like <laughs> there's still some tension there yeah. yeah and this is when Catelyn's. oh my god this is such a was there ever a wedding less joyful and she starts thinking of sansa's <sighs> wedding and i'm like yeah that was bad but this is about to be worse yeah 
Yeah, and she's just like, okay, just a few more hours. We just got to get through this wedding shit. And then Rob will be on to his next battle. And he'll win because he wins all his battles. Oh, my God. As soon as she (laughs) said this, you know, like. Yeah, when did you pick up on things are fucked? Okay. Okay. So, first of all, last time. Okay. I'm going to say it. Okay, so last time, you know when that one dude was missing? Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, he's just off somewhere. Yeah. I did pick up on that red flag, but then I was like, nah. Because the optimism, you know, because last Mm -hmm. time I was feeling optimistic. So I was only noticing, like, like that, when I read that, it, like, I was like, wait. And I, like, really thought about it, but then I was like, nah. Like, what did I... This is us, whatever. But then, whatever, we ignored all of that. Okay, in this chapter, it was, as soon as she said, like, he wins all his battles, I was like, that was like, I was like, oh my god, I don't think this is gonna, like, you know, that was my first thing. Mm -hmm. And then it was, um, and then it was, as soon as they mentioned another person not being there. Yeah, uh, um, Oliver Frey who was Rob Squire and is in fact Rosalind's like brother, brother, like not a half Mm -hmm. brother or cousin or anything, but like full on brother. And he's not at the wedding. So that's kind of like messed up. Yeah, there was that. And then they had another person who wasn't there. And as soon as it like when it happened for the first time, I thought back to when it happened in the last chapter. And I was Mm -hmm. like, maybe this is just, you know, I gaslit myself. I was like, maybe this is just a continuation just like you know keeping some of the themes going you know like i don't know maybe it's you know whatever mm-hmm. it's something else and then as soon as they did it a second time i was like i was like i don't know what's gonna happen but i like like i did not see rob and catlin dying let me tell you that yeah but i did think like okay like is this where the lannisters barge in is this where the Frey lannister alliance that I've been predicting for several chapters comes, mm-hmm. but, you know, like I, I did see that, but like never could I have known that it would be everybody that we care about dying. But yeah, that was, as soon as that happened, I was like on edge. I was like, I don't trust what's about to happen. Cause yeah. I was like, there's like 10 more pages of this. George R. R. Martin does a good job of putting us in Kathleen's position. Cause he's like describing all of her like sensory things, like all the stuff she can hear and smell and eat mm-hmm. like all of it and we're there with her and then the sense of dread that's building in her is also building in the reader mm-hmm. and then yeah. it just crescendos you know uh yeah this was and also yeah. you know what i should have known what gray wind isn't here yeah so um what's his name Frey has uh banned gray wind from coming in because he's like well he attacked my people at the gate and i don't trust him and you might be king almost as if like you ain't no king (laughs) um but in my hall you gotta follow my rules so he forbade gray wind from being there which sucks because i feel like gray wind could have killed them all no big deal (laughs) oh 100 percent yeah um Okay, little distraction from the dread. Um, as they're discussing this, like, whole Grey Wind shouldn't be there, should be there thing, like, Frey was like, oh my god, like, yeah, like, what happened when my, excuse me, grandsons came out to get you? Like, you really want that to happen? Like, I lost my wife because she fell off a horse and cracked her head. But then he's like, oh, actually, she wasn't my wife because the son that I have with her is a bastard so (laughs) he doesn't even like remember exactly who it was but he's just kind of like making things up you know okay i was like what is this man on about it's just like a i guess a way to justify his whatever yeah um so then they're just you know more of the everybody's drinking and the food still sucks and um they're singing the bear and the maiden fair and Bruce Bolton gets up to go to the bathroom or something. And I feel like this is where he gets up to go arm himself, potentially. Murmured some words too soft to hear. Which is his way. And apparently there's a whole second feast happening in the other tower, which is for 
all of like Walder Frey's bastard born children and um, like other Rob's people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so that's happening. Um, and as she says this, she's like, oh, some people were leaving our feast to definitely go check out the other feast and see if it was better. And now mm-hmm. reading this again is just like, oh, my God, you know? Yeah. Oh, Ryman Fay F- Frey is the guy sitting next to her. And um, she ha- he's he's on edge and he is not keeping it together. In fact, he's like the one who ultimately gives it away. But I mean, not that it wasn't going to be given away, but like he's holding it in the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, she uh, Rob asks him about Oliver Frey and he's like oh no he's gone gone from the castles duty that's like all he says <laughs> what's like this 11 year old kid got to do, got to do that he has to yeah. miss his sister's wedding yeah um, and Rob's like okay I guess and then mm-hmm. he like moves on and um, Kathleen's noting how um, and the mu- musicians start playing Iron Lances and then the Great John starts singing The Lusty Lad and she's like someone should acquaint them with each other it might improve the harmony <laughs> oh <my laughs> which God. is like how dare you make me laugh in this chapter <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she asks will Alessandra Frey be playing for us and that's the third person that's missing so it's all the people mm-hmm. who are like sympathetic to the Starks mm-hmm and uh like Ryman Frey can't take it anymore and he like excuses himself and leaves at this point and uh Catelyn's wondering about um whether Lady Mage Mormont's reached the neck yet because she's on that mission to uh Greywater Watch right Mm -hmm. and uh she's taking note of Daisy Mormont who is Mage's eldest daughter who's uh chosen to remain because she's one of his you know best guards and uh, just how she looks great in a dress as well as she looks in a in her fighting things so a great person lost to this chaos versatile queen yeah imagine if robin married her instead you know (laughs) like yeah he really not to, to think- say that like raw uh phrase like reaction was valid any, yeah at but all? like rob kind of signed his death warrant when he married jane yeah because it, it, think about it one of like the foreshadowing kind of for the what's about to go down is gray wind being all nervous at the gates of the twins when they get there right mm-hmm. and like rob has to calm him down and like he ignore basically Grey Wind's instincts, but imagine if he'd been like, "Oh yeah, my my wolf doesn't like this, so I'm gonna opt out of this wedding." Like that's not a thing he can say at this point because he needs Frey so badly, right? Yeah. So there's not many chances for him to back out of it. Mm-hmm. I think I guess he could have backed out of it when they came to him with the offer, and they had sensed that it was like foul play at that point Mm -hmm. did they though at that point oh no not at all yeah because yeah because i think the only yeah because oh my god you also gaslit me when i was like okay but nothing can be as good as the original and like this does not hold up why would frey do this and you were like yeah but it's the next best thing yeah, I had to say that. And it is care. the next best I don't thing care. still. No, I don't For care a reasonable you have to person, it. it would have worked. I don't care. You had to say that. <laughs> I hate that you said that. Okay. Um, yeah, but the other... Well, so when the phrase initially came to River Run with the offer, I don't remember Grey Wind being around. And in fact, people have this kind of theory or... Um, it's kind of backed up by what's in the text, but once Rob found out, or well, he thought he found out that uh, Bran and Rickon are dead, he kind of blamed their wolves for not protecting them. Do you remember that kind of a little bit? Yeah. And people think that he stopped trusting Grey Wind as much and keeping Grey Wind around him. Mm, I think so, you're right, because before it was like every single so battle, So really, everything. it's Theon's fault. <laughs> no, because then... Um, 
Yeah, um, but if we're going down ra- that rabbit hole, then it makes it everyone else's fault. It's like, oh, well, maybe it's, well, well it's Ned's fault, because he did that to Theon, but it's Balon's fault, because that's why Ned had to do that. So really, it's <laughs> Balon's fault. Yeah. Actually, I'm okay with it being Balon's fault. Let's just keep it there. <laughs> but that guy's dead, so it's not satisfying anymore. It is, though, because then I can imagine him being punched, even though he's dead. <laughs> okay. And that's just a beautiful sight. Yeah, but basically that if he had still trusted Grey Wind, he would have kept him by his side and then maybe, you know, caught the scent of this foul play mm-hmm. earlier on and done something about it. But True, true. Yeah. Uh, and maybe... Okay, yeah. No, I'm going down too many maybes. Let's, no, let's, no, no, no. No, say it. I, I was tr- trying to think back to when Rob would have found out about Bran and Rickon potentially being dead. Because mm-hmm. was that... Oh, yeah, that was... That was before he married Jane, because it was like, she helped me grieve yeah. or something, like comforted yeah. me in my grief. So if yeah. that hadn't happened, then he wouldn't have relied on her more too, and like, all mm-hmm. of that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it really, everything is Balon's fault. I, I'm okay with saying that. <laughs> okay. Um, I need a punching bag, like really I badly. I mean, Walder Frey is sitting right there. Yeah, but... It's not, you know how you said it's not satisfying because Balon's dead? But this isn't satisfying because Walder Frey is on top of the world. Like, this is, like, his biggest accomplishment in life. All right. And I don't want to think about I that. I want to tell you who plays him in the show, just just to give you a visual. No, but you can't because... I know, but I want to. Okay, you know what? Yeah, his character doesn't deserve... Okay, yeah. so, hey, um, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. He's played by the actor who plays Filch in the Harry Potter movies. <gasps> and it's such a perfect casting. I hate that, but I love that. Right? He, like, so now he, you can like picture him when you're punching him. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's he beautiful. does have a very punchable face. I was going to say that, and then I felt <laughs> bad for the actor, so I didn't. Hey, he has done well with it. He's like... <laughs> he uses it to its best like capacity you know mm-hmm. true true anyway so um that's that so after all this um finally walder Frey's like okay the wedding's done we feasted now let's get to the bedding mm-hmm. and uh this is when rosalind like goes white because she's like she knows what's coming and Catelyn's remembering her own bedding, which I somehow in my brain was like, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> For some oh. reason, I just like, I was like, Starks don't do that shit. That's, you know? Yeah. But no, it totally happened. And this is disturbing. Jory Cassell, like the guy who we knew from book one, he was one of the people to be tearing her gown and. Desmond Grell is some guy who was part of it. And then there's Lord Dustin, who we've heard about. He was one of, like, the people that went down south with Ned and then ended up dying. But, like, yeah, they were all part of it. And it's real weird. And I don't like it. (laughs) That's gross. And it's not just, like, here, I'm going to pick you up and throw you on your bed. Like, they're tearing their clothes off and, like, like poking and prodding and just being gross about it yeah yeah and Catelyn's like oh I wonder how many of these people will be dead before the year's done <laughs> oh my god oh my stop god. it already uh, <laughs> um man. yeah and Rob's like all right get on with it and they start singing the queen took off her sandal and the king took off his crown and it's like all about undressing and bedding and all of that mm-hmm. and they're making really like crude jokes and stuff which to which they're like they can be so prudish sometimes and then like at this wedding everybody's just like so like upfront and gross and i don't know yeah it's like why can you why can you only be direct about it when you're bullying someone like why can't you yeah why can't you always be like talking about things out in the open in my head that they're prudish and they're not in fact prudish I don't know they're, where that's going. They're, they're prudish when it matters. When it matters? Like, 
like when they need to like tell their kids about things or they need to like talk about things they won't talk about it but then randomly like knights will just be like yeah can't believe you did that at the brothel yeah okay anyway i did not i like none of it and i want no part of it and other than all the deaths this was my least favorite part of the chapter (laughs) um i don't think you can say that and it makes sense what do you mean because the entire chapter was just deaths it wasn't it was like the last like 40 percent no no Anyway, everybody's getting up, doing this thing, and they're leaving. And, like, this is also, I feel like, an opportunity for everybody to get out of the room and go arm themselves. Because the bedding is very clearly, like, when it's supposed to all start. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rob isn't one of the people that leaves. And Kathleen's like, I'm sure Frey's going to take offense to that, too. (laughs) But, whatever. (laughs) Um... And, okay, so people have left now, and there's very few people left, and the only other woman in the room is Stacey Mormont, who approaches, oh no, it's Edwin Frey who blows the cover on everything. Sorry, I thought it was still Raymond. It's all whatever. It ends with a (laughs) W-Y-N. Yeah. So she goes up to Edwin Frey and is like, hey, dude, want to dance? And he, like, pulls away, and not just pulls away, but, like, wrenches himself away with, Mm -hmm. she says, unseemly violence, which can describe all of this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and he's like, I'm done with dancing. And he, like, goes away. And Catelyn is like, wait a second. What just happened there? And she can, like feel the doubt and Mm. she's telling herself like it's nothing you're just an old woman seeing things that aren't there because you're sick with grief and fear Mm -hmm. but she can't let it go so she approaches Edwin Frey and pulls his arm and before she even actually gets to him the music stops for a second, and then the reins of Castamere starts playing. Did you know? <laughs> Did you know at this point? Yeah. Yep. Oh, um, so she, yeah, she finally catches up with Edwin and grabs his arm, and he, and she feels that he's wearing mail under his, like, wedding garb. Mm-hmm. And she, like, slaps him right then and there. And she's like, oh, my God, this is why Oliver and Pervin and Alessandra are missing. This is why Rosalind was crying. Yep. And Edwin Frey, like, pushes her aside. And Rob's like, what the fuck? Like, he gets up to, like, block the dude. But then before you know it, he's got an arrow sticking through his chest. (laughs) I had to. Yeah. At this point. Okay, I do this thing. When I start reading something that's really, like, really dreadful or, like, really painful, my mind, like... Okay, so Nov's brain does this thing where when volumes are really loud, (laughs) their ears just turn off. (laughs) So they went to a rock concert once and, like, didn't hear (laughs) anything. (laughs) Don't like that. Literally didn't hear anything. (laughs) You made me read this series? Deal with it. I don't care. (laughs) Um, so that happened. My brain does this thing when I'm reading and it gets too painful and that type of sensory overload. My brain, I start reading faster but absorbing less and I can't Mm -hmm. control it because I think it's like my brain being like, okay, I need to get to the worst before I process. Do you know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) it's kind of like people where they're like, I need the bad news. I need the bad news. It's it's kind of like that where like I start reading faster because it's like, I just need to know what happens. So So how far did you read before you slowed down? Um, to process um i read i read um until it says there was a dagger on the floor a few feet away okay so, yeah so rob's got an arrow so before through. either of them technically died but by the yeah. time we knew they were gonna when die, did you figure it out that like this is like as big a deal as it is what do you mean like, when did you realize that they were both going to die? 
when did I realize they were both going to die? Well, I was in denial. I was like, maybe they can escape. Maybe they can. So, so never. until like the very end. So until they died, I, I was like, maybe there's hope because I didn't want to accept it. That's why, that's yeah. what I mean. Is like, it was, it's like, my mind's like, no, like maybe it, you know, maybe it isn't as bad as you think it is. So let's figure out if it's as bad as you think it is before we panic. Um, so yeah, no, I didn't, but I kind of did, which is why I didn't. Does that make sense? <laughs> A yeah. Little bit? Yeah. It was like, I feel like, okay, as soon as. I think your denial was like an indication of that you had figured it out, but like you figuring it out was manifesting as denial. So Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So Rob's got an arrow through his chest and then a second through his leg. And she looks up and she notices that like in the gallery with the musicians, like they don't have their drums or lutes. Now they have crossbows. And she runs towards Rob and then she herself gets shot in the back. And yep. she falls off and... Uh, the small John, like, he takes a table off its, like, trestles and throws that on top of Rob to, like, protect him, which was, like, a great move. Too bad which it didn't work. Which is insane because he's, like, so drunk. Yeah. Like, he's one of the people who was most drunk. Yeah, but he's still one of and, the... And now I feel bad for, like... Because I remember before being like, oh, he's so annoying. He's so loud. And now I just feel bad. I'm like, I'm sorry for being mean to you. I love you. I think you're t thinking of the great John. Because, like, we didn't oh, see much of the small John before this. I am thinking of the great John. Okay, now Yeah, I no, I don't think the small... Actually, small John might be one of the guards who isn't drinking. I can confirm that in just a second. Oh, yeah, it was the great John who drunk a lot. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, Small John Umber, Robin Flint, uh, and Patrick Malister, Daisy Mormont. They're the ones who aren't drinking. So he wasn't drunk. Oh. But he was in the middle of eating, and he still got, like, a leg of lamb in his <laughs> hand. Um, but it's still quick thinking, regardless. Yeah. And um, let me get, find that spot See, again. See, there's good people in the world, however few. Yeah. And this is when Slaughter, everybody around them dies. Just, I listed them all at the beginning, but this is where everybody dies. Yeah. And, and finally, uh, Ryman Frey comes back into the hall and he's got a bunch of men, in arm, men at arms behind him. Yeah. And they come in and Daisy's trying to get away and like she gets stopped at the door and killed right there. And then other doors open and people in like shaggy fur cloaks come in and Kathleen's like, oh my God, Northman, great rescue. Except one of them kills the small John. Yep. And it says, hope blew out like a candle in a storm, which I feel like describes how you're feeling right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So and these are Bolton people, question mark? Yeah, Boltons or... So I kind of want to get past this and then we'll talk about okay. who these people might be. I want to get through the plot and then we'll talk about all the stuff surrounding it because there's a lot, okay? Okay. All right, so and in the midst of all this slaughter, Lord Frey's just hanging out on his throne, just like enjoying himself. And she's like, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. And she sees a dagger on the floor and starts crawling towards it. And she finally gets to it. And she's like, I will kill him if that's the last thing I do. And uh, the unfortunate thing is she doesn't get to do that either. <laughs> yeah. um, so Rob, like, finally struggles to his knees. And Walder Frey, like, raises a hand and stops the music, except all but one drum and when i was reading this i for sure thought that this was like kathleen's heartbeat and not a real drum Ooh. but but in Arya's chapter she hears the one single drum too so i guess it's like mm. to keep pace it's like a marching beat or something yeah i don't know just really ominous uh -huh. um and she can hear gray wind howling in the distance 
and uh, nothing t- we can do about that. Um, and Waldifer is like, oops, looks like we killed some of your men, your grace. I guess I'll apologize and they'll be mended. Like equating what Rob did to what he just did, which... Yeah, I'm just too mad to say anything more about that. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to acknowledge that. That's how ridiculous of an argument it is. Yeah, Catelyn at this point grabs Aegon, who's hiding like under a table, and pulls him out and is holding the dagger to his throat and is like, enough, you have repaid betrayal with betrayal, now let it end, and please just let my son go. You can have me as hostage and Edmure if you haven't killed him, but just let him go. Yeah. And the dude's like, what, you take me for a fool? And she's like, I take you for a father. And she's talking to Rob to be like, get up, walk out, just save yourself. If not for me, for Jane. And Rob's like, Jane? But then he like pivots to Grey Wind. (laughs) I don't know. I just kind of like that he thought of his wolf in the... This was interesting. I I don't know. I think it was... I'd like to think it was, like, him realizing, like, our talk at the beginning of the chapter of, like... Yeah, that Grey Wind fuck. is, like, his bro, like, And, like, real. he should have kept mm-hmm. him, you know? Yeah. yeah. And L- Walder's like, why the hell would I let him walk out? And besides, that's not a son you have. That's a grandson. And I never cared for him much anyway. So... Do what you want. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so he does not, he's not up for the trade my son's life for your son's life deal. And she's thinking to herself that, you know, let them do whatever they want with me. I've lived too long anyway, and Ned is waiting, which broke my heart. (sighs) 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 So then... A man in dark armor and a pale pink cloak spotted with blood stepped up to Rob. Jamie Lannister sends his regards. He thrust his longsword through her son's heart and twisted. Fuck this bitch so much. I fucking... I... I... I can't even be like, oh my god, I was right, because... I fucking hate this. I'd rather be wrong about every single prediction than have Bolton fucking kill Rob. I didn't think he was gonna kill him. But I like, know. I just, I just thought he was gonna like betray him, which yes, he did. But like, I didn't like. He was gonna like, you know. The never, level of betrayal. It's all like, beyond imagination. You know, like, like my quote of like, I'm really good at getting things like seventy percent cracked. <laughs> I get there. I just, I'm like. No way would that happen, right? So then I don't get all the way because I'm like, this is illogical. So I'm not the problem. The books are the problem because this, none of this makes sense. Like, why? Anyway, I hate Bolton so much. And like father, like son, doesn't matter if you don't claim your fucking son. He came from your fucking dick. (laughs) I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't expect you to say that. Like, I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know why I'm laughing. This is not, not funny. No, it's fine. You can laugh. I also have an urge to laugh, but I just, I don't understand. Like, oh my God. Okay. So you watched this moment before reading it? Yeah, I did. And like, did it hit the same as reading it? Uh... Okay, how do I tell you things without spoiling you on the show? Because it's done... Differently. Yeah, differently. Like like I've said many times before, the show is its own thing. But this like this happens. Rob dies. Here's Bolton kills him. Um, uh, so there's not the same sense of dread that is present in the books. The show, people really wanted it to be a surprise. So they didn't like give anything 
Okay. And you're not in like Catelyn's head, obviously, you know? Uh -huh. So you're not like building up to it. And there's not like a, your heart's not being squeezed slowly throughout the couple last couple chapters, which like, even though I'd seen this, reading it is just so much more impactful. Yeah. Uh, I also think when I, I think I might have been spoiled on the Red Wedding. Yeah, I think <gasps> I was spoiled on it. No. Yeah, I was spoiled on it. So you when knew it and happened, you kept going? I know. <laughs> what? Were, I you, were you in therapy at the time? Was this self-destruction? I know. This was my teenage years. I was... Okay. So I was enjoying the... So the real thing here was you not going to therapy. <laughs> the real thing was me. This was my strategy all through high school, which was uh, I didn't want to study for exams, so I would uh, start a new show. And this was the show of, like, 2017 or something. I don't know. Man. <laughs> so I, I think, like, I was spoiled on the, sh on the Red Wedding, so I was just like, oh, that's how it happens. And then I think I just, like played the next episode so it like because i could binge all of it yeah, yeah yeah so yeah yeah true yeah so i don't think i got the reaction you got which is why even though it sucks having you react the way you react is gratifying because it's like almost like you are feeling some of the emotions i wish i had felt you know because yeah. then it's like at least i have emotions and i can feel things <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um. Yeah, I I just can't empathize with you right now. I know it's because I'm like, doesn't happen. matter. You didn't have to get hurt the way that I did. You could move <laughs> on and like think about it objectively and like be like, oh, this is cool how they did it like this. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, I'm I was... like, I don't want to talk about this. I just want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. think I'm gonna say a single smart thing in this entire thing, and I don't really. You care. don't have to. I know. Okay, so she, Catelyn, obviously loses it at this point, And she's like, okay, I'm just going to kill this innocent person here. Rob had broken his word, but Catelyn kept hers. Yeah, and it's really graphic, and I don't want to read it. But she kills Aegon, and then somebody like finally takes the knife away from her. And it says, Ten fierce ravens were raking her face with sharp talons and tearing off strips of flesh, leaving deep furrows that ran red with blood. Do you understand what that meant? No. It's her scraping her own face in grief. Oh my god. Yeah, that's her nails digging into her flesh. Oh my god. And she, it hurt so much, she thought. Our children, Ned, all our sweet babes. Rickon, Bran, Arya, Sansa, Rob. Rob, please, Ned, please make it stop. Make it stop hurting. The, uh. sl the slow red worms. Oh yeah, because like, then the blood starts running down her arms and she's like, slow red worms crawled along her arms and under her clothes. It tickles. That made her laugh until she screamed. That's where Mad I someone said she's lost her wits. That's where I started crying. <laughs> That's where I was like, I can't. Because in that, until that point, because especially because then like I flipped, right? And I saw that there was like half a paragraph left of the chapter. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like, then the processing started catching up to the reading. Yeah. And then it just kind of hit. And I was like... I can't read Arya's chapter now. Like, what? Um, yeah. Someone yeah. else said, make an end. And a hand grabbed her scalp, just as she had done with Jingle Bell. And she thought, no, don't cut my hair. Ned loves my hair. Well, at least <laughs> they didn't cut her hair. Yep, but they do Yay. kill her. Hey, we take the wins we can get. A win is a win is a win, okay? Her beautiful hair is still intact, and her and Ned are going to be in heaven together. And, you know, she's wanted to go to Ned the entire time. And at least now she won't have to be, like, 
at least she won't have to be in grief about all her kids being dead, you know? Yeah, like, this was her, like, breaking and killing Aegon. That was a culmination of all the grief she has been feeling. And just, like, yeah, now she's lost Rob as well, who was, like, to her, her last remaining child. So she has nothing else to live for. Yeah. So when you knew that we had Arya's chapter next, what what did you think that would be? Sorry, one sec. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think I at this point I was so far into like, like I was so far into what the fuck that I didn't even think. It was just kind of like, okay, like, let's... I, like, recorded Turn my page, reaction. next chapter. I, no, I, like, recorded my reaction because I needed to just talk out loud and, like, deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went into meeting. What? <laughs> and Wait, during, what? Okay, be, because here's what <laughs> happened. Last night, I opened the book and I figured out how many pages each chapter is. And I was, like, 18 pages in total. Great. I can do that in like... Did you see my note and did that tip you off at all? I didn't read the note. I just saw a note. Right. But that wasn't like suspicious. I was... Just, no, I was... I don't know. I didn't think Cause about you, it. Because you knew to expect... Oh, and you know what? Yeah, not every chapter is going to be a red wedding. So like I do have other notes as well. So I guess <laughs> that makes sense that they could just be normal notes. Yeah, I just didn't pay attention to it. Um, I like... Yeah, and... Yeah, um, like glad. I wasn't, I wasn't dwelling on it. I was just like, oh, it's eighteen pages. You know where I read this on the bus? Because I was like, <gasps> my yeah, God, pray. Yeah, yeah. No, you could if you could have chosen any know. chapter to I read didn't on the bus, know, bro. That's what, and I then, couldn't tell you. I wanted to tell you so many times to, to like, like give pray, yourself time yeah. and just like this and this, but I couldn't say anything. Yeah, because then it would have tipped me off and it would have been like, oh, so I do, sh- uh, I should be afraid. You know how many times I've had to just shut myself up the last few weeks? It Like, I get it. You're in more pain than that, but like it was still difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. Um, Yeah, so I read this on the bus, but the last couple of pages, like the ones where that really broke me, I was like off the bus and I was just walking like to my meeting. And then I like finished, but I was like early. So thankfully I had time to like compose. Like I was like half an hour early. So I had time to like, <laughs> no, like I had time to cry. <laughs> I had time to deal with it. So then um, I like kind of shed a few tears, but I didn't like ball. Like until, you know, like minute two of this episode, I started bawling. I didn't really ball. I just kind of cried. And then I was like, like I was just really angry, so I didn't really like cry. And then mm-hmm. I ju- and then I just started recording my reaction, and I was like, what the fuck? Like I don't know what's going on. And then literally at the end of my reaction, I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna go to my meeting now. Um, I was expecting some kind of text from you. <laughs> well, I didn't want to give you that. Like, except, oh wait, you did text me something. Oh, you but that said, was... hang on. Oh, but once again, that was me going into business mode. Right. I was like, you're this like, is I've got a just- caption for this episode. This episode is brought to you by How to Save a Life. And you said that it doesn't fit content wise, but it's feeling wise and musically. Because yeah. content, because content wise, it's like, um, it, it, it's not like literally how to save a life. It's, it's more like emotional and stuff. But then it's like the vibe of the song is so like, it's so depressing <laughs> that it kind of fit perfectly. And just the chorus really fits because it's like, um, if I'd known how to save a life, like I would have done it. You know, it's pretty much that. And it's like how Catelyn, like, you know, Mm -hmm. like if Catelyn had fucking known, she would have never, you know, it was kind of giving Catelyn. Um, So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Once again, my brain went into business mode. But once again, that was, yeah. Because when I read, I was like, I just didn't want to give you the satisfaction of messaging. (laughs) That was literally the reason I didn't message. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I can. I have my fa- fun elsewhere. Elsewise, elsewhere. No, elsewise. No. Yeah, I was like, absolutely. Because also, like, what? What the fuck am I supposed to say? 
Because think about it. With the fucking cake, because usually the only time... The, I, <laughs> it's Jamie's. Ex- yeah, exactly. The only time I can recall texting you was, it's Jamie's. And that was because I was mad at you for gaslighting me, you know? And yeah, that but it, the, bad. The, that was the time that I didn't gaslight you. You gaslight yeah, yourself. Sh- it's fine. But I thought, but like, that's why I was mad at you, right? But there was no grief in that chapter. It was just like, oh, it was Jamie's, you know? It was just, it was an aha moment, not a ah Actually, moment. I got to be mad at you because you <laughs> had spoiled yourself. Hey, okay, hey, anyway, we we're at a that. different point in time now. Yeah, Let's, so uh, that's the only other time I've felt that strong of emotion to text you but this time i like like i wanted to but at the same time i was like this isn't me confiding in a friend this is me giving (laughs) you screenshots to post on our instagram or on our website what's wrong in that people want to (laughs) know i actually have a screenshot for you um on the last on the last page of the catlin chapter i just kind of went like all my thoughts were just all over the place so i'll send it to you i guess sounds good looking forward to that um you should put it on the website yeah let's talk about aria and then we'll do other talks Uh. (laughs) okay so aria's outside thankfully this is a really short chapter and she sees they're moving they're going to the twins on the bridge but then she sees a bunch of torches moving across the bridge towards them and uh, aria's like oh look they're pull like they're opening the gates and stuff. We can get in. But the hound immediately. And she's like, oh, she's like, oh, we can get in. And she says for a half beat, she chewed her lip too anxious to smile. And this is like, man. <laughs> also, what really made me so sad about this is like, this was one of the few times where like, she stopped truly seeing. I feel like if she hadn't yeah. been so excited about this, mm-hmm. she would have also picked up on it and been like, what the yeah, fuck is happening things are wrong. but it's like yeah. she was like oh great they're opening the gate like she wasn't mm-hmm. she totally could have like she's very smart she easily could have been oh, like yeah, why are they opening the gate but it's the emotion of the moment that's and i just and it just sucked i was like this is like all your life's training you know yeah and it's like well the hound sees what's coming and tells her to get down and pushes her away and um like immediately She's she gets mad at him, but then like the gate opens and all the riders come riding out, mm-hmm. and she's like, "What's going on?" And she hears like somewhere far off a wolf howling, mm-hmm. and then she's like, "Only maybe it was in her ears that heard it." Oh my god! This the sound painful. shivered through Arya like a knife, sharp with <sighs> rage and grief. Which I like that mention of like the supernatural connection they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it still sucks. And then, so the riders are going off and then all of a sudden the tents behind them, the feast tents, one of them has fallen and is now on fire and the others are falling too. And it looks like the tents, like tent fabric is oiled, which I think is like a thing people do to like keep out the rain and stuff. But in this case, it helps them set stuff on fire, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then Arya's like, oh my God, a battle's happening. What's going on? And then she notices that all of a sudden the same song starts playing. Now y'all can fucking coordinate. You fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Cause the song is very clearly a signal like shit's going down. Let's do this. And uh, it's obviously Reigns of Castamir, and it's interesting, kind of like I was noting the, the lyrics, the verses, and seeing where they lighten up with Catelyn's chapter. Mm-hmm. So when it says like, "And who are you?" the proud, like when it first starts playing, that's when Catelyn's like going up to Edwin Frey and being like, "Hey, dude, what the fuck?" Mm-hmm. And so the Hound is like on it, and he like cut, cuts Stranger his horse free, gets gets his sword and starts getting ready to fight. And then this is where we hear more of the uh, coat of gold or a coat of red. A lion still has claws. And when this part of the song is playing inside, this is where everybody, all of Rob's people are being killed. So Mm -hmm. lovely. Uh 
And then Arya like picks up a rock and then she's like, who do I even throw this at? Because like the Freys are supposed to be my brother's like friends and the hound killed my friend Micah. But like they're charging the wrong way. Like what is going on? Yeah. And I think she ends up like throwing it at one of the Freys eventually. Mm -hmm. And um yeah the knight that she throws it at like starts charging at her and finally the hound like cuts his head off or like hits him in the back of the head with an axe which is seems to be his move (laughs) um (laughs) (laughs) i hate that bro i okay yeah and Arya's like what's going on and the hound like yells at her to like get his helm and she does and then she's like okay i gotta go get my brother and he's like are you serious if everybody out here is dead then he's for sure dead which if you think about it yeah like like if everybody out here is dead he's got to be dead too but also if he's dead they of course had to kill rob's army as well because they couldn't just like leave him there to start avenging him yeah (laughs) and i was oh yeah i was okay so i read a bunch of articles and stuff for today um one of which was of course race for the iron throne and i think it was for this chapter and um stephen atwell calls it a what did he say which i blah 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 Sorry, I should have highlighted. Oh, he calls it a total existential obliteration, which hit hard. But that's exactly what they're doing. I hate it here. I know. Oh, my God. But they're like, not only are we going to kill you, but we're also going to kill all your people. Wait, hold up. I asked a question of the week recently. We brought this up earlier. What Mm -hmm. moment made you guys cry? Mm Mm-hmm. And I should have waited to ask that, but little <laughs> did I know that this was coming up. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. You can ask it again. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, can people just like, okay, I have an email request. Can every single human being who listens to this podcast, and there's quite a few of you, and I'm going to need you all to do this. This okay. is, okay, this is... Okay, I think of every relationship that I have as a transaction. Right, um, of course, as you um, should. <laughs> as I should, obviously, right? I don't need therapy. So <laughs> this is what I need from you for you getting to be entertained by my grief. I need every single one of you to email, Discord, I don't care. But I want to hear what y'all think what y'all thought in detail in like extreme detail more than you think we want to know send it in about this these two chapters these two chapters okay so share your their grief with you to lessen your own grief yeah because otherwise i'm done so if y'all want me to stay (laughs) on this is yes i'm blackmailing you because like i said (laughs) i'm not a good person today so anyway okay everybody send that in (laughs) um sorry for derailing and that's okay all right i guess that's a demand we're making i don't know it's a demand i'm making yeah anyway so more of the tents are now being lit light lit on fire and um there's more of that the song finally comes to an end with and now the rains we bore his halls with not a soul to hear which it it's like it's raining now too and like all of Rob's people are dead, so there's not a soul to hear. So yeah, we get it. You know okay, what's you know on. what's amazing about this? It started fucking raining outside as I got to this exact fucking sentence. <laughs> so rains of Castamir really hit. Like that uh, was a choreographed moment in my life. Like if yeah. there is like fate or God or something out there, like that moment was like planned from my conception. Yeah, what are kids saying these days? Like, you reading these chapters is a canon it's event. It's a canon event, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, couldn't yeah. do anything to interrupt it. Please. I, no, you could have. <laughs> you literally brought it on. 
No, but that's the point of a canon event is that you can, yeah. but you can't. No, but this is different. This was definitely in your control. But I also think with that trend, people are just using things that they did and calling them canon events so they don't have to blame themselves. So I think that's what's happening here. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And now, like, in addition to lighting the things on fire, they're also throwing catapults at Rob's people. Homie. So love that. And the hound is like, we got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. And... Arya is freaking out. She can hear that one drum and like she's like her face is wet and she tells herself rain. It's only rain. That's all it is. It's not tears at all. It's fine. (sighs) And she's like, we're here. They're just inside. Literally like a like a hundred yards, maybe. Man. This journey that she has been on for the last three Fucking fucking books. The fucking year. What a fucking year it's been. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. And it ends like this. So and so she sees that like all the riders, like there's no more riders coming through the gate. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I have to go get my mother. And the hound is like, no, that's not happening. If you go in there, you're not coming out. Maybe Frey will let you kiss your mother's corpse. And she's like, maybe I can save her. And he's like, We're, that's not happening. But then she sees them like closing the gates and everything. And she starts just running for it. Because she's not thinking straight. Like, she's just like, I got to get in there. And then she looks back and sees the hound running after her on his horse. And he is charging. And it says, Arya ran. Not for her brother now, not even for her mother, but for herself. She ran faster than she had ever run before, her head down and her feet churning up the river. She ran from him as Micah must have run. His axe (sighs) took her in the back of the head. As soon as she said Micah, I couldn't hold it in. It was gone. It just, like, and it just, and I think also because it really, like, because in Catelyn's last moment, like, you know how you, what you said earlier about, like, all of her grief culminated into this, like, you know, objectively cruel decision? And, like, not that I blame her, but, like, you know, she did fucking kill someone for the last time, like, kind of in her dying mm-hmm. breaths. But it's, like, Arya, yes, while Arya has killed a bunch of people and blah, 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 blah. And I remember, like, I've spent so much of her journey just worrying that she's gonna, like become bloodthirsty or start using this as a way to cope instead of as like oh I killed that person because of survival like that's a fear I've had this Mm -hmm. entire time so I think just being reminded of like how much she cared about Micah and how she's still been holding that for so long like it just just a reminder of how good she was too just kind of broke me Mm -hmm. because it was like man yeah she's not just a bloodthirsty death child yeah, not that she ever was, but sometimes, you know, sometimes... It, it could feel like that. Yeah. There's people around her telling her she smells like death. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that <laughs> Oh my god! I don't think... I think Arya's like the only Wait, person... Wait, Preet, have... you're going into that octave that I can no longer hear. Oh, sorry. Hear. <laughs> okay, I think Arya's like the only Stark I haven't predicted the death of yet. Yeah, it might That's be. That's why when, like, when she was like, you smell like death, I was like, okay, yeah, she's witnessed a bunch of death. Like, what What do you, what does that mean? <laughs> I hate yeah. that. <sighs> Fuck you, high heart ghost bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't care. I need, what's it called? Punching bags. I hate, I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. Do you want to take a minute to punch a pillow before we continue? That's not going to help. Because you're going to get madder because I'm going to point out all the foreshadowing. Whatever. It's fine. You can point it out. I'll just drink some water. Okay. (laughs) Also, every like sad song that I've ever known, which is a lot because I listen to a lot of sad songs, is suddenly coming back into my head. Like there's a song by Joshua Bassett. Love him. Icon. Um, and in it, in it, he's like, 
it's been a fucking year. And I'm like, Aria, that's like, that's Aria's <laughs> line. Like, it's been a fucking year. Like, yeah. Yeah. At least um, it's come to an end. No, that's not like a good thing. <laughs> like, All right. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I want to talk about foreshadowing before we even talk about. Okay. Future shadowing. I don't know. <laughs> like predicting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's do it. Oh, um, okay. So I went through all of my highlights because, um, give me a color, just any color. Purple. Okay. So when I highlight in my Kindle, I highlight like theories and like foreshadowing and that kind of stuff in purple. Like I'm saying purple now. It may not be purple really. I'm just saying purple because I don't want you to accidentally see my book at one point and like know what's up. Um, okay. So I highlighted all in purple and I went through all of my purple highlights for the last three books and I accumulated <gasps> all of everything. Them? Yeah, everything that may be foreshadowing the red wedding. Yeah. And there's some that are like 100 percent foreshadowing the red wedding, but there's oh. others that are like you could read it that way. Okay, wait, give me a second. I want to note some of these. OK, you know what? Okay. I'm glad that you did that because it makes me slightly less angry at you. Hmm. Like for making me read this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not like you didn't do anything specific. You just kind of did the biggest thing. <laughs> All anyway. right. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, this is going to be a real test of our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't. Uh, okay. So in A Game of Thrones, chapter 26, mm -hmm. and this is John's chapter, I believe, mm -hmm. he's, he's talking to Sam and he says, sometimes I dream about it. I'm walking down this long, empty hall. My voice, is echo, e my voice echoes all around, but no one answers. So I walk faster, opening doors, shouting names. I don't even know who I'm looking for. Most nights it's my father, but sometimes it's Rob instead, or my little sister Arya, or my uncle. And Sam asks him, do you ever find them in your dream? And John shakes his head. No one. The castle is always empty. And it's just kind of like a, you know, yeah. death of the Starks kind of thing. I don't know. I thought it kind of yeah. fits. That's um, gross. I hate that. Yeah, that's the only thing I found in a Game of Thrones. I think that one's like a little bit of a stretch, but it is kind of like ominous, stark. Yeah, games, yeah, yeah. You know, it and counts, like, but it's not like direct. Yeah, in a Clash of Kings chapter thirty-three, um, Catelyn. So this is right after Renly has died, mm -hmm. and Catelyn is riding away because you know she's trying to escape that, and she remembers Stannis saying, "I am the rightful king." And your son, no less a traitor than my brother here. His day will come as well. And um, I bring this one up because there's still that thingy that Melisandre did with the leeches. The fucking Beatles, man! <laughs> it was leeches. Also, it? it really works because Bolton killed Rob and Bolton's thing is the leeches. Leeches? Well, Stannis also put in Joffrey's name, so... Yay! Maybe that'll be something. I swear to God, if that's the only exception, I... Like, <laughs> the Lannister to Stark death ratio? Well, I don't really know how much to attribute these deaths to Melisandre, really. Because, like, this is clearly a scheme that has been long in the making with many parties involved, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, But Melisandre could have still seen it coming and then been like, oh, these are the people who are going to die. And then, like... Do you know what I mean? She still could yeah, have but seen she asked it, even him though she didn't to, kill him. Yeah, but the way she, like, put it, she was like, if you do this, then they'll die. But but I guess she could be trying to, like, up her, yeah. like, like, status as, like, oh, I see, I can make things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, so there's that. And then this is, this is, like, chapter 48 of A Clash of Kings. This is Daenerys in the House of the Undying. Mm -hmm. Further on, she came upon a feast of corpses. Savagely slaughtered, the feasters lay strewn across overturned chairs and hacked trestle tables, a sprawl in pools of congealing blood. Some had lost limbs, even heads. Severed hands clutched bloody cups, 
wooden spoons, roast fowl, heels of bread. In a throne above them sat a dead man with the head of a wolf. He wore an iron crown and held a leg of lamb in one hand as a king might hold a scepter, and his eyes followed Danny with mute appeal. Her mouth is hanging open right now, folks. <laughs> now, to your credit, when we talked about this, you did say that this may be foreshadowing Rob's death. Okay. So. Yay. I don't know. Yeah, but this is like literally describing the scene, including yeah. the lamb and like lamb for the slaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it, George R. R. Martin. You're so <laughs> clever. <laughs> wow. I. Right. Wow, I'm tired. But that was a book ago, so... Oh my god. Wow. You can't say he didn't warn us. You can! <laughs> you really can! That's like me telling... That's like me telling a four-year-old, hey, when you're 22, um, an asteroid is gonna fall from space, and it's gonna crush you, so whatever spot you're standing in... <laughs> Um, go 10 meters to the right. And then expecting the kid to remember that when they're 22. Like, it was a fucking four-year-old. That was a also, very weird example. Also, would the spot where they're standing then become the spot they move to? Just <laughs> no, no, no. It, no, no, no. Okay, it doesn't matter. We no, don't need to get into the logistics. No, okay, it's got different. It. All right, then, in A Clash of Kings, Chapter 64. Now, this... This is... Uh, it's not even foreshadowing, as in, like... It was right there. Um, yeah, it's not foreshadowing at all. It's it's plot. It's the plots being unfolded in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. So this is where Arya is at Heron Hall and she is serving Roose Bolt Bolton. And she kind of is like in the room helping him with the leeches while he's plotting and doing his thing with other people. Mm -hmm. So she says that a rider from Sir Hellman had come two days past Tall hurt men had taken the castle of the dairies, accepting the Lannister surrender of its Lannister garrison. No, accepting the surrender of its Lannister garrison after a brief siege. So this is like what's happening. And uh, Roose Bolton is like, okay, so tell that guy to put the captives to the sword and the castle to the torch by command of the king. Then he is to join forces with Robert Glover and strike east towards Duskendale. Those are rich lands and hardly touched by fighting. It's time they had a taste. Glover has lost a castle and Talhart a son. Let them take their vengeance on Duskendale. So he told them to do fucking Duskendale? Yeah, and then he's like, oh, they were just grief sticking and did it, and it's too bad that they everybody died there. What the fuck? Because so he knew it would be a fucking stupid decision. Yeah, he was, like, plotting against Rob right there. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and this is, like, very clearly, like, every time it comes up, like, we see Bruce Bolton give this order. Mm -hmm. You, as the reader, just forget that he gave the order. Unless yeah. you're, like, really on top of it. And yeah. this Duskendale thing comes up every time. Even Tyrion's like, what the hell was he thinking? Yeah, Like, that, and, you know, Rob's like, ah, what the hell were they thinking? Just everybody is... Unhappy. Everyone it. knows it was a terrible decision. Yeah, exactly. Um, then in that same chapter later on, Arya walks into Roose Bolton, like reading a book by the hearth. And it says Roose Bolton turned a few more pages with his finger, then closed the book and placed it carefully in the fire. Now, this isn't anything specific. This is just like suspicious behavior. Like, why you burn in this book? What's in that mm. book? Is it the plot for the Red Wedding? Like, I don't know. I just thought I would point it out. Yeah. I don't think so. Cause then I why is he just burning a books? Like, I don't know, but I, I don't think it's the plot for the Red Wedding. So it's a different plot? Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe it's like the beginnings of a plot. Because I feel like the specifics of the Red Wedding couldn't have happened yet. Because we needed the, like... We needed, like, the phrase stuff. Like, we needed all these different things yeah, to happen. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, like, I remember highlighting it because I was like, that is really suspicious. Like, what yeah. is going on? I think that was just George R. R. Martin being like, don't trust this guy. Okay. All right. Then in A Clash of Kings, Chapter 66, um, 
this is Theon's chapter, like his last chapter. Mm -hmm. And we hear the bastard of the Dreadfort, Ramsay, telling people to save the phrase, but burn the rest. And that's kind of like an illusion. You know, it's like the Boltons and the phrase are out. Like they're cluding. Yeah. And same thing with Bolton. And when the phrase were there with him and then all of that shit. Yeah. Then we move into a storm of swords. Now, this one. This is when Davos returns to Dragonstone mm -hmm. and he runs into Patchface. Mm -hmm. Patchface says, Fool's blood, king's blood, blood on the maiden's thigh, but chains for the guests and chains for the bridegroom. I, I, I. What the so, fuck? Yeah, right? What the fuck, Patchface? <laughs> so fool's blood, that's Aegon. King's blood, Rob. Blood on the maiden's thigh. I assume that's the bedding, whatever. Uh, chains for the guests and chains for the bridegroom. So does that mean that Edmure is in chains and not dead? dead? I think so. All right. Because I think it's also like, because then they also like, because then I think Frey would also want that claim to fucking River Run. River Run. And then if they're unaware of what's happening and they're just like going at it and then she gets pregnant, mm -hmm. then that's what yeah. Frey wants. All right. So Edmure may not be dead. That's something. I don't think Edmure's dead, but that also frustrates me because, like, of all people to survive, it's <laughs> him. Yeah. Hey, at least the blackfish wasn't at the wedding. <sighs> yeah, that's true. Instead, he's probably being besieged by the Lannisters. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> all right. Um, now, question. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is involved in this? So we know the phrase and the Boltons for sure. Lannisters. How how do you think the Lannisters are involved? Like in what way? Lannister I mean, okay. the blasting of their theme song <laughs> is kind of like a you know big clue. Um, yeah, but I, I think it just goes back to okay, Lannister letters to Frey and to Bolton. Mm -hmm. Um, Bolton. Now this checks out with Bolton letting Jamie go. Because before yeah. it was just him playing both sides and I remember you saying that to me and I was like, "Nah, I just don't trust this bitch." Well, I had to say something cuz it's so hard to justify it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, "Nah, no, disagree fully." Um so that and then and it makes sense from the phrase perspective. Um and it makes sense for why, like, um, yeah, because now Tywin's chilling. Like, it just, it just checks out. Yeah. Well, to support that, actually, from A Storm of Swords Chapter 19, Tyrion's chapter, uh, they're having a council meeting and um, they're talking about, like, who Tyrion should marry and they're like, oh, you should marry Sansa Stark to secure the North. But Tyrion's like, yeah, but the Iron People hold the North. Like, what's going on? And his father's like, just do this thing until a better option presents itself. Mm. And Tyrion's like, hmm, there's something he's not saying. He remembered those important letters Lord Tywin had been writing the night Tyrion had demanded Casterly Rock. Mm -hmm. What was it he said? Some battles are won with swords and spears, others with quills and ravens. He wondered who the better option was and what sort of price he was demanding. So likely the better option was Frey or Bolton. Yeah. And sorry, I forget what the specifics of that were. Like what was, because Balon was like, um, be on our Balon? side be on our side and we'll give you the or we'll plunder the north for you that was what Balon no was it saying, was right? like was no we'll saying? ally with you but we want the north oh oh and then the th okay so the better option is who to give the north to right yeah 
So, okay, say that the better option is Frey or Bolton. And they, like, what did the Lannister, what is the price they had to pay for to get them to do this? Because now, for, like, Bolton, obviously, he's got a lot, like, he's got stuff at, on stake. But Frey, this is happening in his house. He's the one breaking guest right, which is a big deal. Yeah. And he's, like, using his forces and everything. So that's a lot. What will he get? Other than, like, petty vengeance, obviously. Would he want Harrenhal? Maybe. I don't know. He would definitely want River Run, and if he has Edmure, he kind of has that. Okay. Yeah, because I don't think he cares... So just, like, more lands, money? No, 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 I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Because it's probably a marriage thing, because he's very big on, like, but that shit. Ha- oh, I guess Tywin has, like, a bunch of, like, brothers and cousins and that kind of stuff. I mean, Cersei. Oh, who's Cersei gonna marry? <laughs> but I don't think he would do that, because that's too big of a price. I but think maybe so, he too. would, because he also said, I don't trust anything you say to me. Um, cause Cersei, cause he said, cause who were his options? Was it, cause with Cersei, I feel like he was straight up with her options. I think he said, um, the, the, the Tyrell who Sansa was supposed to marry. Right, Willis. Or like maybe one of the Martells. You know what? Actually, I think that's right. Because also I remember him being like, or not him being like, I remember, isn't Frey like mad? Cause his house isn't like. Yeah, they're, like, one of the smaller houses, not one of the great yeah. houses. Yeah, so I think because of that, like, he that's too big of a price. Um, Maybe it's just, like, obviously it's, like, protection for being on Rob's side. And then maybe just, like, mm-hmm. more land. Marrying a few Lannister cousins, you know? That sort of mm-hmm. stuff. I, yeah, because I just can't think of anything super big. And then what about for Bolton? What would he... Maybe the North? So Bolton is Lord, what, no, Warden of the North now? Yeah, I think <laughs> Forgot so. Forgot that that kind of, like, existed, because now there's, like, King in the North. <laughs> I don't think they'll let him be King in the North, because the whole point is to not yeah, have King yeah, in the yeah. North. I don't think they would. Okay. All right, Bolton. Um. Also, though. Yeah. Bolton just killed half the North. Yeah, are they going to be okay with that? Yeah, who's going to follow him? <laughs> I mean, if they gotta, they gotta. But also, like, maybe they won't know. Maybe he'll just run the story of, hey, my bastard saved the North from the Grey Joys, you know? And he'll blame and then Rob and everybody dying on the phrase. and Yeah, and he'll be like, be like I, I barely got away with my life. Exactly. Yeah. But mm. but I think that's that's still so suspicious, though, because literally every other person died. Every other tent went up in flames. Like, literally nobody survived, right? Or am I wrong? I don't know. We don't know yet. Okay, like, I'm sure some people probably escaped. Like, if they were on the outsides and they saw. But also, these are North people and, like they're trying to be really loyal like they might have stayed fighting until the end maybe some of them yeah. so i don't know but i'm sure there were a few people who escaped so i don't know i guess we'll just have to wait on that yeah okay uh other things uh bolton has uh like a bunch of car starks with him who don't like rob either because rob killed their their guy their lord right that should have been another red flag for me that he had yeah. all the fucking car starks. Yeah, so remember when we were like a bunch of north wind stormed in? So that might have been Bolton's people or Car Stark's people. Right. That's oh, okay. what that is. Um And in chapter 32 of A Storm of Swords, Tyrion is that's when they're like looking at the swords that Tywin had made. And Tywin's really confident that Jamie's gonna make it back. So Further evidence of, uh, like, whatever, right? Yeah. And then the whole Duskendale thing, more mention of that. And 
Uh, chapter 36 is that Davos chapter where Stannis makes his wish with the three leeches. Oh my god. In case that's foreshadowing. And uh, maybe Frey. Oh no. Never mind. May- oh, no, say it. I was going to say, I forgot that Lysa is now supposed to marry Peter. Petire. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, she's available, but no, she's marrying Peter. Yeah. Okay. So then in chapter 37, which is a Jamie chapter, this is when they get to Heron Hall and uh, they're hanging out with Bruce Bolton. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jamie's like, how does Lord Walder relish dining on trout in place of wolf? Mm-hmm. And Bolton's like, oh, it makes for a tasty supper, which is like. I don't know. It's kind of like a, I feel like at this point they've figured out the details that they're going to kill them at the feast. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those things. You it's know? a little rude. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he so and then at that table, same place, like Jamie threatens him mm-hmm. and he's like, uh, it's scarcely chivalrous to threaten your host over his own cheese and olives. The Lord of the Dreadful, F- Dreadford Skull, Dreadfort scolded. Fuck, I can't talk. In the North, we hold the laws of hospitality sacred still. Do you? <laughs> Do you? I mean, anyway. I mean, I guess Frey isn't, is Frey, he's like the cusp no, of North. No, he's, uh, he's like Riverlands, but like Bolton participated in that. But it's not his hospitality, so I guess he's not held responsible for it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, in chapter 43... Arya's chapter, um, the ghost of High Heart, tells that she dreamt a wolf howling in the rain, but no one hears his grief. And <gasps> no! Are you making a sound right now? Or <laughs> can you not hear me? No, I literally you're could jo- not. Oh my god! Every time I think you're joking, I'm not joking. No, I'm, I'm like, are you like, just making a I know frozen? That you're or not? But it's funny that you are. Okay. Um. <laughs> I I was just saying no because that really hit. Yeah. For Grey Wind, man. So what do you think is, is going to happen to Grey Wind? Maybe he'll go find the Nymeria pack. So he was still in the fray like kennels or something. Wasn't he just with the other guy? Yeah, but still like in the fray kennels, like in that area, like with the Westerling guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's the Westerling guy we don't like. Uh, no, the Westerling guy we don't like is the Spicer guy, her uncle, who was sent off. Okay, yeah. This is Rob's brother-in-law and his batter bearer. Like, we don't, like, we don't really know anything about him, but he's not the guy that, like, Grey Wind was howling at. Okay, maybe... I'm going to be a little optimistic. Maybe I shouldn't dare so soon. But I don't know. I just want to think that he escapes, man. I cannot handle Grey Yeah, and it's interesting. Like, can the wolves even survive without their person, you know? I mean, like, alive? I guess, like, technically they can. But it just is, like, weird. Yeah. (gasps) Maybe part of Rob will work into Grey Wind and live through him. Because we know that's a thing that can happen. Mm-hmm. Like with that eagle that's yeah, scratched with John's face. I think that lost connection might hinder that. Yeah. Okay. Like I know well, right at the end, Rob did have that moment of redemption of like Grey Wind. But I just don't think that was enough. Yeah. Well, maybe though, him saying Grey Wind in his last moments was him reaching out to Grey Wind and working into him. I just don't think it's enough. Okay. Anyway, so in that same chapter, the ghost of High Heart says, I dreamt such a clangor, I thought my head might burst. Drums and horns, drums and horns and pipes and screams. But the saddest sound was the little bells. (gasps) Yeah. And uh, then she also like says to Arya, I see you, wolf child, blood child. I thought it was the Lord who smelled of death. You are cruel to come to my hill. I gorged on grief at Summer Hall. I need none of yours. Be gone from here, dark heart. Be gone. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. And um, in chapter 44, Jamie's chapter, he tells, uh, um, Bruce tells him to give your father my warm regards. And uh, Jamie's like, so long as you give mine to Rob Stark. And Bruce Bolton's like, for sure I will. Oh and he my did. God. And then he himself became a Kingslayer, if you think about it. Oh my God. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, then chapter 47, Arya's last chapter when they're crossing over the bridge, not even the, like the last, last chapter, like second to last chapter when they're crossing the river and the it ends with the hound just being like, let's just get to your uncle's bloody wedding. And I was like, oh, <laughs> right now. Oh my um, God, please. And of course, in our, uh, Catelyn's last chapter, there's Grey Wind not liking the phrase and Frey being like, no words can set it right. That's right. And he also interrupts Rosalind when she like starts crying and is like, okay, go away before you give it away. And uh, he's real excited about the bedding and we like commented on that, but like we know that there's a second meaning to that. Um, once again, the Duskendale thing came up last chapter, and um, if you would remembered that Bruce was the one who gave it, then you would have been like, "Liar! He's up to something. He's gonna kill Rob." He could have, like, you could have picked up on it, but yeah. didn't. And in Arya's last chapter, she says that she had a bad dream, a terrible dream. She couldn't remember what she dreamt of now, but the feeling had lingered all day. If anything, it had gotten only gotten stronger. So I'm not saying that she dreamt of the Red Wedding. But just that sense of dread. More of it, right? Yeah. And, yeah, just like at the wedding itself, the fact that the musicians are terrible and that there's so many of them and that Rosalind is like got that fixed smile and is just constantly crying and that there's so much to drink and that all the Oliver and Pervin and Alexander Frey and everybody is missing... It's all just telling us what's about to go down. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I need a break. One second. All right, so predictions, what even happens from here? Like, okay, so you predicted that uh, Frey's going to get more lands and stuff cause, because the Lannisters, and then Bruce Bolt is going to be made Warden of the North, mm -hmm. and Grey Wind is going to escape, and... That Edmure is still alive but captured. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I had a question before I started and now I've forgotten it. What was it? Oh, yeah. So, this like breaking of guest right, is that going to have any consequence for Frey? So. Like, supernatural or otherwise. Yeah, I'm wondering, is that, like, a law or is that a religious thing? It's, like, a religious thing. Um, it's, like, the law of the gods kind of thing. Right, you know? I mean... It's, like, because they... It's, yeah, because now nobody's gonna ever trust him. Nobody's coming over for dinner, ever. Nah. Yeah, but, right? like, he's so, also gonna die in, like... Like he's old. Just of old age. He's old. Okay. So. Right. So it won't have any political or supernatural repercussions of, for him? I don't think so. And here's why. Because there's no one left. For him to, <laughs> like, everyone else is just Lannister people or people who already hate him. Like, Stannis or Balon. Like, they don't love him anyway, so. Balon's also dead. Oh, yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's literally nobody left. Like, there's no one here to, like, get mad at him. 
All right, fair enough. Um, I mean, there's still like the regular people that weren't part of the army. Okay, and what are they going to do? And also, hang on, all the river river landlords, a lot of them, stayed back. Yeah, like they weren't at the wedding. Um, and the blackfish is still around. Do you remember when Everyone. Ned took everyone with him to Winterfell and then he kept sending them on death missions when people needed men? To King's Landing, you mean? Or, yeah, to the, yeah, that place. Mm-hmm. Um, and he kept sending them on death death um, missions when people needed people because he's just like that. Yeah. And then soon there were no Winterfell people left and now there's no North people left. And I'm just like, man, like, this, I just, and, like, the North is where we need people because, like, others and, like, wildling defenses and, like, Mm -hmm. like, this is just so, like, what? I'm so tired thinking about it. Total (laughs) existential obliteration? Yeah, like, how do you just- Although, his wife is still alive. Any chance she's pregnant with the heir? Ugh. I don't think so, man. So that makes John the heir? Yeah. I mean, the pe- there's people out there who know that John's the heir because like, they went to the Neck to find Greywater Watch. So that's something. Yeah. The only sort of hope we have is fucking Holland. Or Holland Reed. Ho- Howland Reed. <laughs> Whatever his name is. <laughs> Reed man. All right. Literally the only good people in this series are the Reeds. I only like the Reeds. <laughs> I hate everyone else. Everyone else can suck it. Even the Starks? Even Well, they're all fucking dead. <laughs> well, like still like more than half of them are still alive. Brown and Rickon don't count. Sansa, John. Yeah, that's it. It's like two. <laughs> Brown and Rickon count. I don't care about them. Okay, fine. Like, significantly. I just don't have an attachment to them, so I don't really care. All right, I don't think we're going to get any more predictions today. Yeah, I don't think we are. Okay, so next chapters? Almost feels like, will there even be next chapters? (sighs) Hold up. I'm going to see if I had any other thoughts. That aren't just curse words. <laughs> Half of my notes in these chapters were just swearing at different characters. We should auction off your <laughs> books with the notes in Please, them. Please, no. Nobody's, these are not seeing the light of day. <laughs> I want to see them, though. No. Mm-hmm. Because, Kate, my books are not, like... This is going to sound, okay, most of my notes are, like, so unnecessary. Like, most of my notes will be, like, damn. Or they'll be, like, or it'll, like, for some reason I feel the need to write that. Or they'll be, like, thoughts that I don't, it'll be, like, what ifs. So if you read them, like, you'll be, like, did you really think this? And I'll be like, no, this was just me imagining an alternative. Well, just keep that in mind the next time you want to go snooping on my phone. When have I snooped on your phone? Where you have done it. And you've been right there. Yeah. Yeah, but if I give you the books, it's different because I'm not right there. No, I would do it when you were there. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Because I need to be able to. I need to be able to defend myself. All right, we don't need to talk about this right now. Let's. um, Says the person who brought it up. Okay, haven't. Do you have any thoughts? I'm looking.
Okay, so the stuff with, like, Oliver, Pervin, Alessander not being there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you said at one point, like, they were the ones who, like, the Starks liked or kind of had a relationship with the Starks. Mm-hmm. But I I just assumed it was, like, part of the deal. It was, like, hostages to make sure, like, Frey follows through on the deal. Or, like, something oh. like that. Oh, so, like, the Lannisters took hostages? Yeah, like, it's just kind of, like, like to make sure both sides do the deal type thing. Hmm. I don't think we've, like, received any specific indication as to that, but it is a possibility. Yeah. And then also, before I realized how bad it got, I was thinking, like, maybe, like, the phrase or, like, Bolton or whatever could have, like, I don't know, like, a few hostages or something. Because, like, you know, the families of the northern men are still... You know, like, there. And, like, mm-hmm. they're still, like... So you thought they were going to take hostages instead of just kill everybody. Yeah, I thought there could be some sort of... But I guess it does make sense, right? Because it's still this entire army that was loyal to Rob. And, like... Also, another thing that broke me was when she was, like, he had a gift for making people loyal to him. Yeah. That kind of really <laughs> hurt. I was like, man, you Except just... the people that it counts. Why? Like, if Oliver Frey were the Lord of the Twins, then sure. That would have been great. And it just, man, can Oliver, like, kill his grandpa? <laughs> like, please? Huh. I don't know. Maybe we'll hear from him. Uh, is he going to be the next Pov? Pov? Point of view. POV? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was feeling lazy. I thought you were saying, like, Pod, because Pod is a squire and oh. Oliver was a squire. Oh. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, anything else? Um, <laughs> I was brought back to Jamie saying the things I do for love. I don't know why, Mm -hmm. but I, like, I just started thinking about, like, the whole, like, man, like, because Rob broke his word for love, and it's like, the shit you do for love, man! Moral of the story, don't fall in love! Uh, Rob did it, I would say, more for honor than for love. Yeah, true. But, yeah. Well, for love of his honor, maybe. (laughs) How about you play me your reactions now? Oh, yeah. Okay, one sec. Let me just make sure there's nothing else. Do you want to put those reactions into the actual episode? Um, I don't know. You can hear them and then we can see what you think. Okay, too. all right. Let's go. I'm just making... Bro, I had a lot of thoughts. I need to make sure I'm not hurry missing anything. Hurry up. I'm so sleepy. I am not I hurrying up. I'm trying. You should use those tabs to mark the places that you need to bring up. I don't want to. Okay, when she throws the rock at the fray, like Arya, when she does that, she's like thinking mm-hmm. about how she'd thrown like an apple at Gendry. And I was like, she's mm-hmm. never going to see Gendry again. Yeah, if she's dead, she's not going to see anybody again. I don't care. That was like, bro, like they were, and like they were together for so long, like almost a full year. Like they just split up. Mm hmm. That's so sad guess your ship won't sail all my ships are sinking (laughs) man (laughs) 
Okay, I hate the Hound, however. Like, fuck him, right? However, oh yeah, what's he gonna do next? Um, he can, like, go die in a hole. I mean, okay, because, okay. okay, so I know he, like, obviously he, you know, <laughs> actually he can go die in a fucking fire. How's he gonna fucking like that? Okay. Um, okay. So, him, I get Maybe that- he did Arya a favor, because the phrase might have been more cruel to her. At least it was, like, one quick blow. I don't care. She would have been alive. And there could have been a chance to do something, but now she's dead. Or she could have been flayed. Yeah, but she also could have not been. Alright, okay, so, uh, you were gonna say something about the Hound. Yeah, hate him. However- um, like, the fact that he can have the, this much composure in the face of fire and, like, just, like, general battle chaos, like, this was, this was crazy. I was like, go off, I guess. Admirable. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I hate you, but whatever. Um, yeah, he's like, I'm not done living yet, so... I think the thing that confuses me about this is obviously, like, okay, so he killed Arya because he knows he can't, like, ransom her off now, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But then, like, so if he, like, goes into the castle and he's like, hey, look, I killed Arya for you. Like, take me into your service or something. Like, I don't see him doing that. Yeah, but if they now are allied with the Lannisters, the Lannisters want him dead. Yeah, that too. So it's like, He's not gonna do that, but is but like where is he gonna, you know, like where is he gonna I go? He was gonna go die in a hole, in a fire, in a fiery hole. I want him to, but I don't think he will. I don't think so... he wants that. I don't know. He'll he'll go hit up. Like, does he have friends? I don't think not so. That right? I know of. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'll. J- He'll probably just, like, he'll probably just go onto the road, steal stuff from people, maybe, like, go find an inn or something with, like, food or something and, like, threaten them into feeding him and taking care of him and giving him ale. That's all I can So he's of. just gonna go be miserable somewhere. Yeah. And make other people miserable. Okay, cool. Moving on to next chapters. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, back to this thing. <laughs> You'll have to delete all that, but... It's okay. Anyway, next. Uh, Do we have any, like, emails or something nice? You know what? Mm-hmm. No, can we just please Wait. do it? I need it. Okay, we have an email, but it's not nice. It's kind of mean-spirited, Mots. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid. <laughs> So he sent it today because I told everybody in the spoilers that we were recording this today. Really? Oh yeah. My God. Did and, were people uh, like? <gasps> yeah, of course they were. <laughs> <laughs> they want us to release two episodes next week so that they we're can not listen doing. To we're not fucking soon. doing that. Yeah, I th- I don't think so either. But like, it's, people it's, are eager. It's what people want. I can respect that. Yeah. But we're not doing that. <laughs> so. Matsu's email is titled, A Listener Sends His Regards. <laughs> Please, I hate it here. Hello there. So, Harmut, as I'm sure you can probably tell, this has been a highly anticipated episode. So much so that there's even been a weekly countdown in the spoiler chat. You're joking. You're no, actually not joking. <laughs> So while I don't really have any specific thoughts by the chapter itself, I couldn't resist the urge to send in an email anyway. If this email makes you angry or sad for any reason, feel free to yell at me. I probably deserve it. <laughs> you know what? In case, in this case, Mott's kind of. Because his, his point number one, as you know, he likes to number his points. Point number one is, speaking of things that might angry, make you angry or sad... Harmuth, who died in these chapters? I hate you, Mott! <laughs> <laughs> I hate everyone! <laughs> oh my god. I, yeah, I... So this was it? Like, this was why that was introduced? Kinda, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. 
most like 90 percent this okay there's like 10 percent other reasons which will come up later but like you're joking i thought you said it doesn't get worse it won't if it doesn't get worse it may be as bad but it doesn't get worse <gasps> don't say that <laughs> honestly i don't think it gets as bad either because like there's not gonna be another rob or aria or catlin okay just stop blah. okay i hate it so his point number two is back in a Game of Thrones, Illyrio warns Daenerys that a Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is deemed a dull affair. I can't help but feel like the Dothraki would have a great time at this wedding. Oh my god, you're so right, dude. <sighs> yeah. Number three, there's a song about this particular scene that I really like. However, it's about the TV show version, so I don't know if you'll want to play it for Harmouth. Anyway, if you want to check it out, I'll include a link. And he did, and I looked at it, and it does include spoilers for the TV version, which is slightly different. So I'm going to hold off on that. Mots, send me that link again when we're, <laughs> when we're watching the show. Yeah. Okay, all right, there you go. So I never got around to reading the chapters myself this time around, so most likely that's why there aren't as many points in this email. That's probably for the better, though. I feel like this episode might be one of the longer ones. You think? Oh my god. <laughs> and for the record, I do feel a little bad for sending this email just to mess with Harmouth, but it's so rare to have somebody completely unspoiled on the series, so I couldn't help myself. I love you guys, and I hope you're both having a great day in spite of these chapters, and also my email. As always, thank you for the show. It means the world to me, and so do you. Sincerely, Mots. P.S. Wow, this email actually turned out to be a lot longer than I expected. I shouldn't be surprised by this, but for some reason, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. I don't hate you, Mots. I'm just frustrated. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I was having a great day until I decided to pick up this godforsaken book. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Next chapters. We should really get to next chapters. We're going to read two next time. Tell me who you want to read about. I want to read now about that the dead people. <laughs> I want to see the dead people in heaven. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, I want Ned and Arya. What? That's no, what you can't say that. Okay, then who do you <sighs> think you're going to have? Theon and <laughs> yeah, actually, Catelyn. No, you can't keep doing this. <laughs> Fine. Um, Davos and John. Okay. Well, we're going to read chapters 53 and 54 next time. Chapter 53 is Tyrion. Fucking Lannister. <laughs> hate the Lannisters. Fuck them. Even Tyrion? Yeah, because he's a Lannister. Alright. We'll find out. I mean, we'll probably see Sansa and Tyrion finding out about all this shit going down. Which will be terrible. Um, I'll hate Tywin more for being an evil genius. Um... Maybe Jamie will get there. We'll have a little reunion. Yeah. Because <laughs> those always happen. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, the ones that we don't really care about do always happen, so. All right. Uh, chapter 54 is Davos. So you got that one right. Um, same thing. They'll find out and Melisandre will be like, it was all me. And everyone will be like, I don't know. I'm just saying things. Just more planning, plotting. I'm really tired. It's okay. Oh, I'm satisfied with that. So people, give us your thoughts and also yeah. your reactions to this when you first yeah. came across Everybody it. Everybody send a super detailed email empathizing with me. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I need. Yeah. I, I've gone beyond threatening you. Now I'm just like begging you to do it. <laughs> yep. So our email is popculturesymposium at gmail.com. And of course, you can join the Discord, which is linked in the show notes. And also follow us on Instagram at popculturesymposium. Can't believe this episode is over. It's been three years a coming. <sighs> Were you 
thinking about this episode when we started. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. How could I not be? Like, if you were me, put yourself in my shoes, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, until next time, farewell, my friends. Talk to you later. <laughs> Haters.